Wild Turkey has released a limited edition bottling to commemorate the 70th work anniversary of master distiller Jimmy Russell. And there's a good chance that this milestone has never been, nor will ever be accomplished by anyone else ever again. But is the whiskey good? If you want to find out, then stick around. So uh, you all at home may be uh, concerned that Pretty Girl is not on camera today, okay? But that's okay, because Lindsay is at work, and when she's been coming home, she's been very busy working on the Live Stay Project fundraiser, and she has not been able to break away to record with me, so she asked if I could call Angela in to sub for her. Thank you, Lindsay. Yes, and Angela's always fun when she's on the podcast, so... Um, you guys are in for a treat. I'm not even sure that we'll be able to put all the shenanigans in the video. No, there's a, there's a lot of outtakes that have already happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have a new policy that we disclose where the bottle came from so that people know whether or not okay. to uh, discount what we're saying uh, to see whether or not we were bought. So Wild Turkey does not sponsor the podcast, uh, but one of their publicists reached out to me and... They gave us this bottle. Nice. So I did not pay for this bottle. If you think that I can be bought for a bottle, you can discount everything that I am about to say. So <clears throat> this bottle has a really awesome story. So Jimmy Russell, the master distiller, started working at the distillery on September 10th, 1954. Wow. And so this September 10th was the 70th anniversary of him working there. Uh, and... I mean, you almost never even hear about people being married for 70 years, no. right? Think about it's working really cool. at the same business for 70 years. And, I can be his job. And at a, well, well, his job is awesome now. Yeah, it's uh, amazing. Yeah, so he, uh, he did preside over Wild Turkey during the downturn of bourbon, um, and he's been widely credited with helping to bring about the current bourbon renaissance that we're all experiencing along with some other luminaries um, from some of the other distilleries. And they were all friends, and they used to you know, go to conferences together and all that stuff, and um, some of them have passed on, but uh, definitely a huge figure in the bourbon world. And Jimmy's, some of his innovations to kind of bring wild turkey up into a premium uh, spirit category were the cash strength rare breed and the single barrel Kentucky spirit that they they started releasing under his watch. Um, he's also been very vocal about how he likes his bourbon. And uh, this whiskey represents what he sees as his perfect profile. Oh. Right. And so he's not a super big fan of high age statements. Uh, in fact, um, I've heard... Interesting. I've heard quotes from him that uh, if a whiskey's gotten too high in age it's likely because it wasn't good and nobody wanted it, right? And so it's just been sitting there aging. That's great. Um, and the, these barrels are also um, from areas and warehouses that he thinks are kind of honey holes, mm -hmm. that traditionally he's really liked barrels from there. Um, and so they kind of put this together to be specifically for him. And in fact, he said, if you don't like it, it's fine. He'll drink it. So, <laughs> I love that. Uh, that was in one of the one of the press releases. But Jimmy now can usually be found hanging around the visitor center, uh, greeting guests, telling jokes and stories, uh, and just generally being an icon uh, bourbon ambassador, right? And so there's tons of pictures online of individuals that have traveled to Wild Turkey and are able to go up to Jimmy in his chair and take a picture with him and get a bottle signed. And uh, I have not had the pleasure to do that. I would love that as well. Um, I, I was there one time when he was there. All my friends went. They hung out with him. Uh, but I was off doing a podcast someplace else. No. So I got a signed bottle from him up there. But, uh, but I, I've not had the chance to talk to him in person. Um, so anyways, I have, I have hung out with Eddie before, though. So uh, his son. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So uh, I've been blessed in that way. So let's get into the bottle details. So the distillery obviously is Wild Turkey. The release is Wild Turkey 
Jimmy Russell's 70th anniversary release. The age is eight years, although uh, there's some nine year barrels that got blended in for profile. Uh, but as you know, the youngest barrel dictates the age that goes on the label. The proof is 101 proof. Again, uh, that's right in his wheelhouse for his favorite proof. And the SRP, if you can find it, was only $50, which I kind of respect. Yeah. Right? I, I, I'm pretty shocked. Pleasantly shocked by that. Because there are, I mean, the Russell's releases that are limited <laughs> editions, the prices have been super high. But the reality is, is that this whiskey isn't very different from Wild Turkey 101. It's the same okay. proof. It's about the same age. It's from similar barrels. These are just barrels selected for this project, right? Uh, but because of the eight year age statement, it's actually uh, very similar to a regular product that Wild Turkey makes all the time, but doesn't sell in the United States, which is the Wild Turkey 101 eight year that they sell in Japan. Oh, wasn't it? Isn't that the one I tried on? I think I was on, I think you on did. here and got to try that. And I ooh, I, want, I might walk out with that bottle, uh, that box. Yeah. We, it might be missing. We, we <laughs> have a viewer of the podcast that's stationed in Japan. So every so often he'll, he'll send me one. So. I'm going to send yeah. him my address. There you go. Um, uh, Angela has a way of finagling bottles out of, <laughs> out of my uh, I mean, male whiskey friends. Uh, well, let's. let's that's <laughs> it's 100% true even though she's a little I mean, embarrassed by it now there is some truth to that but let's just not go too far off the deep end like <laughs> you know I'm just friendly she didn't she didn't do anything immoral <laughs> no, no I was no. gonna say I'm just friendly yeah she's just she was being friendly and then the guy gave her the bottle I can't I mean literally that's all that I it's was all it was <laughs> yeah I mean her husband supported the whole thing I mean, he does. He's happy when I bring home these bottles. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He's like, go give us a bottle, babe. All right. So, th <laughs> so this one is 750 ml. Uh, so what do you think we uh, we should taste this Excuse one? Excuse me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm ready. So on the nose, uh, right off the rip, compared to most other Wild Turkey 101 products, this one has a bit more of a smoky profile to it. Yeah. So I'm 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 anticipating a little bit more barrel char influence. Is it weird that there's like a little weird like I'm almost feeling like there's like some cinnamon and sage going on. I don't know if sage is the right spice, huh. but there's something in there that's not not normal. Yeah. But I in can, a good way. I yeah. like it. Like I, I like the nose on this. I could see that. Uh, yeah. And I don't know, like one of those cooking spices, you know, I'm not the most eloquent with this, but that's okay. Um, I I don't think I made uh, note of the mash bill in the notes, but there, I mean there are there is rye in here, so okay. it wouldn't be odd to get some sort of a a, a spice note uh, on here. But yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. A spice. There's note. something in here that's a little bit different than the normal nose, though. Uh, hard to put my finger on it. I'm getting a little bit of leather too, um, which I'm not sure that I get a lot of leather on the regular 101 that's non age stated. I like it though. Yeah, I like the nose that's chasing yeah. up. It's got all of the sweet notes that you expect of a wild turkey up front. Some good caramel, uh, honey. Uh, mid palate's got some cherry, a hint of something nutty. Um, but that's my that spice, that smoke. The comes smoky through. is on the back end for sure. Yeah. Because like you said, that that. Let me get this. Yeah, the front of the palate, you're really getting just enough sweetness to kind of counterbalance because at the finish of the back end it is it's pretty smoky yeah it's just a hair of a, a nutty flavor but not a lot I've, I've had some um some russell's products that are really nutty and this one is not that nutty but you it does have that traditional you know wild turkey profile with a little bit of the cherry um yeah cherry and and a little bit of a a, a nutty component to it But yeah, I'm not sure that um, the leather, if the leather comes through, it's right on the finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where you're getting kind of that barrel char. You can you can taste that this this barrel seems some age. 
Um, I actually really appreciate the complexity of the flavor as far as uh, the more I drink it. Mm -hmm. I do like how the flavor profile is changing from front to back. Like, it's not just a stagnant, like, oh, this is just sweet, or oh, this is just vanilla, or whatever. Like, it's got, there's some real, like, nuances going on here to appreciate. Yeah, and it, this is very well balanced, and it is uh, quite a bit more complex, I think, than the regular Wild Turkey 101. Yeah, Not I think age so stated too. that we buy here in the U.S. Um, and not as much barrel char as I get on the Japanese releases. The Japanese releases are... Uh, sometimes a little overdone for me on, on okay. the barrel char. Um, so how would you rate this one oh, on the 100 hard. point scale? I'm going to give this a, a solid, I'm going to give this a solid 83. Okay. I really like it. There's a, you know, the, like I said, there's a good complexity to flavor. Thank you, sir. Um, I am not, I think I've said on previous episodes, um, typically a, a sweet bourbon drinker. Mm -hmm. So I do appreciate the fact that it has a little bit of a sweetness at the front, but it doesn't finish sweet. It's yeah. not finishing sugary. It's, um, I kind of like a bourbon to kick me in the face a little bit. And it has just enough of that going on, like in the palate, I think, to kind of keep it interesting. So I don't yeah. know. I, I, I like it. I appreciate it. It's there's really there's enough barrel influence on this that you're getting a nice bitterness that's especially on the finish that's like closer to like a dark chocolate uh, bitterness well maybe that's why i like it I and um yeah, so it's pretty interesting for me i'm gonna rate this one probably like an 85 maybe 86 oh nice um pretty solid i like it a bit more than their regular offering uh yeah. is it a buy or pass at 50 dollars? absolute buy yeah I, I mean this is this is a historic bottle yes so. Um, even though the liquid is not, you know, some, you know, we've lost these barrels and we're never going to be able to do this release again type barrels. Like they could do this all the time if they wanted to. Right. Um, and it, obviously it's quite a bit more than the regular 101. Um, more than double the price. But it's not the astronomical prices that you see for a lot of the limited edition releases that are coming out. So I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I it's a beautiful bottle, and there's a beautiful story behind it. Right. I would be proud to own this bottle if I if I saw it, I would snag it in a heartbeat. All right. Well, what do you say we give away some whiskey? Let's. So what I thought we'd do on this one uh, was we're going to do a one ounce sample of obviously the featured bottle, the 70th anniversary. But let's let them try the uh, companion bottle, which is the Wild Turkey 101 that's Japan only. And just for funsies, uh, we are going to let them try the non-chill filtered version of the Rare Breed. Ooh. Which uh, Rare Breed was invented uh, by Jimmy. Um, and uh, this was mostly sold in duty-free shops, so it wasn't in wide distribution. And I don't know why, but this version, I like it a lot more than the regular uh, rare breed. It's it, this. Maybe it's just this bottle. It's phenomenal. So we're gonna let you try all three of those. We're going to have. Let's see. It's I need to generous. check volume and make sure <laughs> I've got. Uh, oh yeah. I'm trying to figure out what are my eligibility uh, on this if I go online and uh, start typing in the form. Uh, well, you've got a uh, one in uh, however many chance. We're gonna have five winners on this one. Excellent. So we're gonna have five one ounce sample packs. You're gonna get one each of those three whiskeys. All you have to do to enter is like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for future notifications of content pieces and future giveaways, because there's a giveaway in every video. And to enter, you have to go to YouTube, go underneath the player, there's the video description, expand it, find the web form, fill out your information, we'll run a randomizer, post the results publicly on YouTube post for accountability, reach out to the winners, and send you your samples absolutely for free. Well and worth the, the time to do that. Yeah. I mean, highly. We have a core yeah. group that they, got, they uh, go to every video now. And then they all, smart. Talk, they all talk to each other in the comments. And, That's great. And they were like, I made the top 20 this this <laughs> time. And they're like, better luck <laughs> next time, buddy. You know. And then someone's like, I finally won. You know. That's and great. I love that. So it makes it fun. Um, if you like this content, you want to think about supporting the channel, you could consider joining Patreon. We've got membership levels for all budgets. 
And we have a lot of member benefits. You can go over there and check those out. You can also go to bourbonrealtalk.com and check out our merch. Everything we have was made by whiskey people for whiskey people. And we feel like we solved some whiskey problems and have some pretty cool things out there. And uh, last but not least, I am a residential real estate agent in the Houston and Dallas metro areas. So if you need residential real estate agent services, consider hiring me. I do give epic bottles as closing gifts. I have made the comment more than once that I'm going to sell my house just, just to, to get, get a bottle. To get a bottle yeah. that you give away. People are like, yeah, you because know, I've given away, you know, pappies and and B tax and like everything you think of, right? And uh, but yet. The girl that supposedly gets all the free bottles hasn't. I haven't. Mean, I would like just to add, Randall's never given me a full bottle. I no, <laughs> she's never bought herself a house. So <laughs> sorry. I mean, I let her come over and drink whatever she wants. This Un is true. Ungrateful. I'm not complaining. Good not Lord. complaining at all. And then I invite her to events, and she like <laughs> she rizzes up my friends and leaves with their <laughs> bottles of whiskey that are hard to come by. Like I don't, I don't even know what's going on with you sometimes. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so you can find all three ways to support the channel in the video description below and if this is your first time tuning in we'd like to thank you for the view and let you know what we're all about and that is bringing people together around whiskey and that's a mission of my wife and i is because we lost my younger brother to suicide and we were looking for opportunities to create community and connection the type of connections that my brother was missing whenever he made that decision and we saw how whiskey is bringing people together. So we started the podcast and we knew we needed forums to help people get connected. A lot of the forums had negativity in them and that taught us two things. One, we need to start Bourbon Real Talk community, which has been very successful for us. Uh, but two, it taught us that uh, if those people can be hateful online, uh, there's nothing that keeps us from uh, showing love online. And that's why we end every episode the same way and that's this. If you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that I love you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon World Talk. Cheers. Cheers. I think you're the first person that has also memorized the music. I do have it memorized. That's yes, where you just do you back to. Yeah. Yes. It's actually about 3.5 million people, but over 8 million views. So, a lot of people. Right? A lot of people. About 1% of the US population has seen my podcast. Uh, and yet, I only get stopped by people who watch the show when I'm traveling, which is weird. I was at the airport and they always search my bag because there's always whiskey in it. Oh, uh huh. And uh, the TSA agent was like, uh, by the way, I love your show. No <laughs> and I, way. And I was like, well, your guy stopped me because there's whiskey in the bag. And he's like, I know, I'm like, can you help me out? And he's like, he'll be done with you in a minute. And then in a lobby in a hotel in Phoenix, and I had the 12 year with me and I was like, uh, you wanna have a drink? If you ever see me come, come up and ask for whiskey, I'll probably have some for you.